early days in the new MLS season. So, how's your team doing so far? Riding high, heading into week four? Or chasing a chance to kickstart the campaign? All 28 teams were in action. And we begin our look back in the East at Bank of America Stadium. Bender approaches on the left side corner. That landmark ticked. Could the new boys add a first point or even a first win? Unbelievable! Supporters Shield holders New England would have something to say about that. Josie Altidore has his first goal as a member of the Reds. Welcome to the club, Josie. Commentary comes from Dan Roebuck. Still Charlotte probed. Slow start to the game so far in the opening five minutes or so. Darting field potentially to get Alcivar in. Svederski will go for goal! And there it is! Charlotte breakthrough in Queen City. A first home goal. A special moment for this new club. And they lead against the Revs. Really good hit. Finding the corner. Edwards. Raced across to his right-hand side, but could not keep it out. Oh, here's a mistake, and Volster could be in, brought down penalty, surely. That has to be a penalty. There's the mistake, Berting pounced, Volster got forward, that's a shocker. Well, there's complaints ongoing. Carlos Hill makes no mistake and the New England Revolution are back on terms here against the Major League Soccer new boys. No doubt that it was a penalty kick. Just need a spell of possession, you sense here, Charlotte, to try and re-engage and get back into this game. They've been a little off the pace since the restart. Swiderski backs in, play continues. Rios with the header, won't get there. This is Bender to pull it back. Swiderski! He's done it again! All rise in Queen City. There's a new king here. And Charlotte a 2-1 up. Just two minutes and 40 seconds between the goals. That's a really good hit. Revs drawing level and Charlotte getting themselves back in front. This is Boateng. Now it's with Legette. Brandon by Altidore makes the move to the near post. It's gone to the far post. Terrific save. Kalina denies Polster. That looks certain to be a second leveler for the Revs, but for the intervention of Christian Kalina. That's a wonderful header and a really good save. This is Flick. And Savar, who will go again from Svederski's ball. Gonzalez tries to get back. Bender is calling for it. El Savar pulls it back. Bender for Charlotte! Wonderful breakaway goal for the crown, all right. Queen City goes wild. Gonzalez couldn't get that. El Savar had the pace and the awareness. And a thumping effort that beat Earl Edwards here to give Charlotte their third. In it comes from Carlos Heel. Not it back towards Carlos Heel. He'll get a second goal. And looks to curl in. Oh! Hit the frame of the goal. That would have been a spectacular strike. It might not have counted for much. A royal performance in Queen City for Charlotte FC. It is a first Major League Soccer win for the MLS New Boys. At the 90, it's finished. Charlotte FC 3, the New England Revolution 1. Being a coach is so difficult, you know. And being a professional player is also very difficult. But I believe we, we, we pay the price for, for nights like tonight to, to uh, enjoy playing football, this football that we play. Goals, you know, celebrations, fans, so... I mean, we really deserve it. 
The Columbus crew began week four top of the Eastern Conference. Unbeaten so far, they carved a golden opportunity against the New York Red Bulls. A moment to forget for US international Jazzy Zardes, who somehow missed a sitter from five yards out. And to Columbus fans' disbelief, it happened again. Derek Etienne on the breakaway wasted a perfect chance to score against his former club. Unable to convert after allowing Carlos Coronel to make the save, coach Caleb Porter was left wondering how on earth his side weren't ahead. Those misses would prove costly. Tom Barlow capitalising for the Red Bulls. Morgan, head in, it's in the back of the net! Red Bulls take the lead! But in a sloppy and scrappy affair, Columbus finally got their goal. Darlington Nagby pounced in the fifth minute of stoppage time to deny the Red Bulls all three points and maintain the crew's unbeaten start to 2022. The Philadelphia Union took their unbeaten start to Yankee Stadium in New York City FC, the team that beat them in last season's Eastern Conference final. The Union opened the scoring in just the 12th minute through captain Alejandro Bedoya, a third goal in his last five games against NYC FC. The reigning MLS Cup holders had reached the CONCACAF Champions League semi-finals in midweek and their prospects here appeared to improve when Santiago Rodriguez was brought down in the box by Jack Elliott. Referee Ted Uncle awarded a penalty and sent off the centre-back. But a handball by the Uruguayan was spotted on video review, meaning a reprieve for the visitors. Philadelphia took full advantage as they doubled their lead just past the half-hour. Nathan Harriel's cross turned in by Daniel Gazdag. He scored for the third match in succession. The Union thought they'd made it 3-0 in first half stoppage time. Only for Sergio Santos to be denied by the offside flag. They'd been without 11 players after a Covid outbreak for that playoff defeat to NYCFC last season. Harriel heading off the line here was one of those drafted into the team that day and has started this year as a regular. As Jim Curtin's side saw out a third straight victory. Bob Bradley was still awaiting his first win since taking charge of Toronto FC. And DC United soon cast a doubt on whether that would be today. A perfectly placed header from Russell Knaus put DC's noses in front after 10 minutes. But Toronto responded soon after. 2020 MLS MVP Alejandro Pozuelo poking home the equaliser and his first goal of the year. The busy Pozuelo was then involved in the move that led to a landmark 50th goal in a TFC shirt for a hometown hero. Paul whipped in here towards Osorio! Jonathan Osorio gives Toronto FC the lead! And Bradley his first win as Toronto boss. To Mercedes-Benz Stadium, where the tone for this one was set from the get-go. Goal! Joseph's on the mark early! Joseph Martinez taking just six minutes to open the scoring against CF Montreal. Atlanta continued to push forward in search of a second. A little too much as it turned out. There's leaving yourself open, and then there's this. Georgi Mihalovic with the freedom of the field to run through and level the score. Montreal had exited the Champions League in midweek, a home draw with Cruz Azul not enough to avoid aggregate elimination, but their response was impressive in Georgia. Lassie Lapalainen finding teenager Ishmael Kone to score his first MLS goal as the Canadian club sought to recover from starting the league season with three straight defeats. Kone has just received his first call-up for Canada this month and was heavily involved here. He next drew a penalty when brought down by Miles Robinson affording Montreal the chance to extend their advantage before the first half was finished. Ronald Kyoto stepped up to the spot to score his first MLS goal since a double against Atlanta back in October. Three inside 15 minutes for Montreal. It was the first time the Five Stripes had conceded three goals before the break at the Benz in their MLS history. And the chance of rescuing anything from the game appeared remote when they went down to ten men midway through the second half. Sub Dom Dwyer had only been on the field for three minutes before being shown a straight red card for a studs up challenge on Joaquin Torres. But the late drama was still to come. First, something very special from Atlanta's record signing. Thiago Almada wants one. Almada! Oh, what a goal! 
some way to open his account. And then in the second minute of stoppage time... Lennon goes for goal. Oh, it's there! It's there! It's there! Another late Atlanta goal to add to last week's winner here against Charlotte. Brooks Lennon's leveller ensured this one improbably finished 3-3. After a first win under Ezra Hendrickson in DC last week, an unbeaten Chicago Fire were back at home. Casper Shabuko scores the first goal at Soldier Field in 2022. Sporting Kansas City, the victims of Casper Shabuko's first strike since joining from Philadelphia. Also awaiting the chance to open his Fire account was Chicago's latest big name signing, Sheridan Shakiri. This foul on Mauricio Pineda by Courtney Ford presented the Swiss international the perfect opportunity in the second half. Jordan Shakiri. Was there ever any doubt? But SKC soon burst the Chicago bubble when Roger Espinosa pulled one back for the visitors. It was left to the fire, though, to light up Soldier Field once again. Shabilko stealing the spotlight from Shakiri and blazing in his second from close range. Shabilko! That'll do it! Casper Shabilko with a brace! That's now back-to-back -back wins for Hendrickson. Next to TQL Stadium, as FC Cincinnati attempted to build on last week's win in Orlando. Not since June of 2021 had they won back-to-back -back MLS matches, but they were soon in front against Florida's other franchise into Miami. Ronald Matarita opening his account for the campaign after being picked out by Brandon Vazquez. A fine finish from the fullback, who swiftly returned the favour just six minutes later when providing the cross for Vazquez to double the lead and continue his fine recent form. Midway through the first half, and FCC were well on their way to ending a run of eight straight home defeats in MLS. Miami had won all four of the club's previous league meetings and soon had hope of a way back into this one. Matarita's eventful afternoon continued when he conceded a penalty for bringing down DeAndre Yedlin. Heron's coach Phil Neville had asked for more from starman Gonzalo Higuain and he did at least deliver from the spot. The Argentines' first goal of the year against opponents who took three pass last season. The deficit halved half an hour in, but Miami weren't able to maintain any momentum. Instead, the game's second penalty went Cincinnati's way, heading into the closing 15 minutes. Damian Lowe bringing down Vasquez. Luciano Acosta is still waiting for his first goal of the season, though. The captain missing the chance to wrap up the win when firing wide. But Cincinnati did get their third goal four minutes later, thanks to a familiar combination. Monterita into the box, headed out by Vasquez! Brandon Vasquez, back-to-back -back braces! Four goals in two games, as many as he managed in the whole of last year. Three straight defeats for Phil Neville. After Austin's soaring start... They've got five! The most prolific start in league history. Defeat in Portland. Two by Hanson in! The Sounders were next. Free header, go ahead, goal! Who needed no introduction. Rui Diaz saw the goalkeeper off his line and scored fantastically. A truly special goal. Adam Virgo and Phil Blacker are your commentators. Here they come with Bruin taking on Kiskante. Might run through for Albert Rosnack. Stuva had to make the save this time and did smartly. Still the threat though, but it's blazed over the bar in the end by Bruin. Oh, it's the chance of the game so far. He just hit through it. But he went for a precision rather than power. Brad Stuva made a comfortable save in the end. All sorts of space here for Christian Roldan. Bruin in the middle and it's bundled in. And against the balance of play, it is the Sounders who strike first. Will Bruin all smiles on his first start of the season. Well, it's the captain that makes an early run forward. Not really too sure how much Will Bruin got on that touch. He'll claim it, won't he? Oh, of course he will. All strikers do. Christian Roldan with three in the middle to try and aim for. Xiao Paolo brings it down. 
And it really should have been turned in. Big chance for Leo Chu. That's a brilliant counter-attacking play there from the Sounders. And Jao Paulo doesn't quite get the connection on it. Now Chu there should have taken his chance. What a chance that was. Here's the throw from Nick Lima. Very decent distance on it in towards Cascante. Ring was behind him, bounces back off the bar, and then it's just wide from Aruti. That's the best chance of the second half for the home team. And his ring that strikes the post from that long throw. What a chance that was. Fagundes. It's a much deeper delivery this time. It's out as far as Daniel Pereira. Fagundes. Space here for Lima to clip it in, and a really good save from Cleveland. Just a touch that over the top. Austin are getting closer and closer. Gabrielson there with the header. Good power, good precision, and it's a fingertip save. Some threatening deliveries recently. The in swinger this time. Cleared out only as far as ring. Tomanic. Here's Lima. Seattle just standing off Nick Lima. He's able to provide quality with the delivery. It's back in towards Fagundes. There's the equalising goal that they've been threatening. Now it's been coming. It certainly has been coming for the home team. Dominguez there who hits it back absolutely brilliantly to Fagundes who swivels and turns quickly on a sixpence. It's a goal that has been coming for the home team. It's a goal they certainly deserve. Xiao Paolo, good ball in. Norris attacking it, Fagundes back defending. Kellen Rowe, scrapping for it for Seattle and wins it well. Kellen Rowe! Also thumps it against the bar. Oh, from nowhere. Callum Rowe strikes the bar, does really, really well. There's Lima. Testing ball in towards Ring. Dominguez to have a hit. Ring trying to return it goalwards. And smart reaction from Cleveland. Oh, it's a brilliant save. A reaction save. But you maybe say that's a poor miss as well. Austin FC 1. Seattle Sound as well. The guy's resiliency and the grit and grind was, was awesome. And we talked about a few things at half, and, and I challenged them in that, that area to come out in the second half and, and, and let's up the competition, up the speed of play, and, and they answered that. And, and again, the game started to tilt in our favor, and, and we were able to, again, put them under a lot of pressure. And um, that's what we talked about doing, and um, I was glad to see that come to, to fruition. Steve Trundolo's LAFC were the early leaders in the West ahead of week four. But it was the bottom side Vancouver who struck the first blow at Bank of California Stadium. Tristan Blackman coming back to haunt his former employees. That certainly kicked LAFC into gear. Jose Cifuentes thought he'd equalised, only for Thomas Hassal's ninja moves to deny the table toppers. Vancouver, who are still looking for their first win, caught them on the counter. Christian Dahomey using his electric pace, but Canadian Maxine Crepo was there flexing his muscles up the other end to deny his old team. Up stepped Ryan Hollingshead to header in the leveller and his first goal in black and gold. Then the shackles were off for LAFC. Kwadwu Apuku using his ballerina footwork to dance around the Whitecaps' defence and set up Carlos Vela. The cross, near post, second bite! Oh, Carlitos! From there, it was plain sailing, with LAFC securing the points with another from their star defender. Holy RSL began the weekend level on points with LAFC. Their strong start to the season mirrored by how they began this match. From Justin Merrim's corner, Bobby Wood scored the opener in just the second minute. After defeat in Dallas last week, Nashville were attempting to avoid back-to-back -back losses in MLS for the first time since August of 2020. Last season's main man, Hani Mukhtar, is yet to score this year. Kept out on this occasion by Zach McMath, when well-placed to change that. 
Mukhtar was instead the provider when Nashville did find the equaliser they'd been threatening. It was his free kick headed home by Walker Zimmerman to make it 1-1. And the team from Tennessee were so close to completing a turnaround before half-time. Another brilliant ball from Mukhtar found Daniel Lovitz, who was unlucky to be denied what would have been just his second-ever Nashville goal. Tate Smith had scored his first in MLS the previous week with RSL's winner at New England. Then came this. Good ball back post. Yes! RSL back on top. And it's Tate Schmidt again. A third successive win was on the way for the home side on a night which ended on a sour note for Nashville. Dax McCarthy, on as a late sub, had already been booked in stoppage time, but was rightly shown a straight red card for a stamp on Bodie Davis to which he later publicly apologised. McCarthy admitted he'll accept any further punishment that comes his way, as Nashville's eight-game road trip to start the season before their new stadium opens took a turn for the worse at its halfway stage. Having beaten Nashville themselves the previous week, FC Dallas were eyeing two home wins on the bounce with the Portland Timbers, their visitors. And the host got off to a great start thanks to a neat dummy from Paul Ariola to set up Jesus Ferreira's first of the season. Two minutes later, Dallas doubled their lead, with this US international clearly hungry for more. Ferreira to two, a brace in mere minutes. Oozing confidence, it was perhaps no surprise when this happened in the 36th minute. Here's Ferreira, a chance for a hat trick, and he does it! A first has hat trick for Jesus Ferreira! Dallas's fastest ever hat trick in MLS and first for Ferreira didn't put off Portland as Yaroslav Nizgoda's smart chip clawed a consolation back for the visitors. The Timbers had the wind in their sails and nearly had a second. David Ayala's rocket expertly saved by Martin Pines. But Dallas soon put the game to bed after Ariola scored his first goal in his new colours as the host secured back-to-back -back wins on a memorable night at Toyota Stadium. 4-1, it finished. Staying in Texas, where the Houston Dynamo had also posted their first win of 2022 the previous week. After victory over Vancouver came the visit of Colorado and it needed a fine save from Steve Clark ten minutes in to repel the Rapids' Jonathan Lewis. Colorado were aiming for a third straight win and went ahead just before the break when Mark Anthony Kay, who'd also scored in beating SKC last time out, turned in Jack Price's corner. That's how it stayed until the last minute of the 90, when Tyler Pasha was presented with a chance to level it. Garbrook comes out! Oh, it's all tied up! Pasha pinching a point to preserve Houston's unbeaten start at home. In a cross-conference matchup, both the LA Galaxy and Orlando City were aiming to bounce back from first defeats of the season. And after a blistering start for the Lions, club record signing, Facundo Torres scored his first MLS goal. Orlando was showing no signs of slowing down. Cesar Ararujo going close after the break, leaving a rather frustrated Oscar Pareja on the sidelines. The Galaxy's best chance came from Efrain Alvarez, only for goalkeeper Pedro Galese to stand firm and help Orlando to a first away win of the season. To our final game, where Minnesota were aiming to maintain their unbeaten start to the season against the San Jose side with just one point to their name so far, Luis Amaria gave the Loons the lead with just over half an hour played. The Paraguayan had proved the match winner at the Red Bulls the previous week, but their advantage came under threat here. Benji Kikanovic going close for the Quakes. South African bongo hookley Huangwane was making his first MLS start and threatened to make it 2-0. Minnesota, though, still haven't managed more than one goal in a game all season. But that was again enough for the victory. Minnesota climbed four places into third in the West, courtesy of that victory. The top two are as you were, as LAFC lead RSL on goal difference. No change at the bottom either, with Vancouver and San Jose still chasing first wins. The new leaders in the East are the Philadelphia Union, thanks to their success at Yankee Stadium. It's Columbus in second, with the Chicago Fire now up to third. Montreal and Miami at the bottom remain winless. You never forget your first. A first treble in MLS. 
Here's Ferreira. A chance for a hat trick, and he does it! What a performance from Jesus Ferreira. And a first ever win. This copyrighted broadcast of Major League Soccer may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.